Hello and welcome to the second part of this Python tutorial series. We're going to be creating the initial build for the course that I'm doing for Pact Publishing. That course is all about microservices in Python. I will provide links in the description below and in the top here if you want to get that course. It's all about microservices. So if you want to learn about how to create and architect microservices, what on earth a microservice is, and how to monitor, how to secure microservices and all of that good stuff, then do do check that out. But today, what we're going to do is continue on our journey of the initial build of the order management system that I'm going to be using in that course. Last time, what we did is we focused on the actual Docker side of this build. So we created the Docker image, we created the Docker file, and of course, we created the Docker container we were able to get into that container and we were able to ensure that Python was installed and everything was correct. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the login part of the order management system. We're going to be using Flask and that is a Python small framework. It might as well be called a micro framework. And with this framework, we can define all sorts of things as you would expect the the model controller and view type aspects of an application. Of course, Flask does much more than just the model controller view. And if you are interested in learning more about Flask, then there is a book that I highly recommend. And that is somewhere in this office there. This, this book here by Miguel Grinberg. It is a uh, flask for web development, very highly recommended book. It has all sorts of things in here like security and web forms and authentication and uh, all about data. So creating uh, data models and so forth. And the book is written in a very sort of simple way. You can easily digest bits and pieces of this book. It's very, very helpful. So I will leave a link in the description down below um, if you are interested in getting this uh, book here. So anyway, let's just put that back. Let's get on with today's tutorial. So what we're going to do is go straight into the tutorial here. This is just PyCharm as we left it last time. We've got app.py here, which is empty as it was before. What we're going to do is we're going to import Flask. Before, what we did is we installed Flask on our Docker file. I'll just show you here. Um, what we did is we did pip install hyphen r of requirements.txt, which means that we've we've got the Flask uh, package that we've uh, installed by the requirements file. So now we can actually start filling this out. So the first thing we need to do is import Flask, the module of Flask that we have installed. So we do this by from and then Flask, like so. We're going to pass in import keyword and it's Flask with a capital F. The next thing we need to do is create a variable called app and we're going to equal that to the Flask module. So let's do app and then equals and then Flask, so capital uh, F here, passing in in the parentheses the current name. So underscore underscore and then name like so. Put in two spaces and there we go. We have now got the app variable, which is the Flask module, which means now we can do various things on Flask or using Flask, such as define routes. So let's do at and then app dot, and then we can pass in root like so. So we're calling upon the root method. In here, what we can do in these parentheses, what we can do is actually define the root that this uh, function will be using or this controller will be using. So in this case, let's just do a forward slash. Um, and then what we can do underneath here is actually do a def to define a function. And we're going to have, we're just going to call this index like so. And we're going to open that up and then we're going to actually put some bits in the body of this index controller. So the index itself is the controller and that controller will be mapped to the root of forward slash. So the controller is where you would manipulate the response before you actually send it back. But let's just do return 
and let's just do h1 so we're actually going to return some HTML like so and we're going to put in h1 we're just going to put in login like so so that is what we're going to return put in a couple of spaces like so now the reason why that is uh, underlined in yellow is just means that I need to put in a space like so just break things apart it needs to have two spaces in order for the warning to go away and that is basically a very simple uh, controller here we've defined the root so anything that goes to slash is going to run this index uh, controller and that's just going to return the HTML of h1 and then login in order to make this work what we need to do is run the flask application now flask has its own server notice in our docker file we don't have any web server particularly running here I'm gonna set all that up probably later on I'm not too worried about that right now what we can do instead is actually initialize a development server that flask has I say development server this should be treated like development and that is what we're doing here we're developing an application don't use this in production but we would usually run the development server in the terminal but again we're doing this in a docker container so we want to have this running all of the time in this development sort of world if you will in order to run the flask development server what we can do is just at the bottom here have if and then let's do underscore underscore name let's make sure that the name variable and check that against underscore underscore main let's ensure that that is correct whoops like so and what we do in this body of this if condition if this is true we go ahead and run the development server and we can do this through app dot run and we can pass in the parentheses we can pass in um, a couple of arguments the first one being debug we're going to equal that to be true and also the host so the host here we're going to equal that to a string where we have zero 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 and zero because that is the current host okay that's complaining because we need to have another space like so and uh, that's pretty much it to be honest so just to, as a rundown what we have here is we've imported the flask module um, so we've from flask import flask we've then got a variable called app that we've equaled to the flask module here we're assigning a root so this is um, forward slash so basically the home page it's going to run the uh, the function or the controller index and in index we can do obviously quite a lot of stuff it's a controller so we can manipulate the the request we can manipulate the response and so on and so forth but we return a response so this could be a response to an API this could be just HTML it could be XML it could be whatever it could be a download blah 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 but right now what we're doing is we're just returning a HTML which just has the word login uh, lines 10 and 11 they're all about uh, running the development server It's a development server we're running debug equals true we're running it on this host like so which means that when uh, the container runs and it's going to be running from uh, this app.py file if you remember if we go back to the docker file so Python and we're running app.py then what that's going to do is it's going to load all of this and then it's going to run the server and then if the the root comes back as a forward slash so if someone's gone to the to the home page then this controller will be running this will be the response the return so what we need to do is go into the terminal now and actually start running this container ensure that this all works but before we dive straight into the terminal I should say that this is going to run against the uh, the the flask development server here against port 5000 so in the docker file what we've done is we've exposed port 80 so we don't need to do that so I'm just gonna quickly remove that now save that and the first thing we need to do is build the image because we've obviously removed that expose instruction but also because when we build the image we're copying the app folder into the docker image therefore any changes to the app folder 
we need to rebuild the image. I'll be talking about how we can use things like Docker Compose and volumes, Docker volumes to sort that that stuff out. And therefore, uh, we, we're almost like uh, mounting our our app directory and we can work within it. But I'll talk about all of that later on in a in a different part of this this uh, series. Let's just go ahead and build the image. I'm just going to do a reverse search because I'm lazy. So we're going to do a Docker build and that has been built. That's perfectly fine. Now we have the built image. We can now go ahead and create our Python Flask container. So type docker run, and then let's do hyphen hyphen name. We're going to call it uh, order sys. I think that is what I had before. Um, and then hyphen d, because we want it in detached mode, obviously. Whoops, hyphen d like so. Um, what else do we need? We need the ports. So we're going to do port 80. That's the host on port 5000. So that is the um, the container server. That is the Python server. So port 80 is the host. We're publishing that against the exposed port of 5000. And finally, the image name. So order and then hyphen system like so. Press enter here. And let's do a docker ps hyphen a and we can see everything runs as it should be. This is up, um, which has a status of up. It was created two seconds ago. It's running the app.py file. That's the command that's actually been running at the moment. Um, it's a little bit squished, this output. I do apologize, but that's the name. This is the stuff around the ports and so forth. I go into a lot of detail about all of this stuff in the Docker in Motion course that I created for Manning Publications. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to learn more about uh, Docker. So hopefully now, hopefully we should be able to go to a browser and actually see our application running. Basically, it's just hopefully going to have the word login. So let's now go over to the browser and refresh the page. And yes, we have login. Let's just bring that out a little bit closer. Uh, bigger to make it a little bit more easier to read. That is the login page or that is the home page of this application. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a web form that allows you to log in. Obviously, I need to have uh, the, the database behind it, which is something else we're going to be focusing on as well uh, in this series. So that was the first controller example in this series. We're going to be delving even deeper in how we can use perhaps query strings and perhaps how we can parameterize queries and also changing and manipulating the body and the response and so forth. We're going to be furthering this by having a login form. We're going to have a registration form and we are just going to initially build the uh, the bits and pieces that create the order management system that I'm going to be using in my course for packed publishing all about microservices and Python. So if you want to learn microservices, then do check out that course. I'll put a link in the description down below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.